Hello and welcome to another Inside EVs video. In this video, we are taking the BMW 330e, updated for 2021 on the new G20 chassis for a highway and city electric only range test. Let's get into it. The 330e is new for 2021 with the new G20 chassis 3 series. We have a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack installed capacity. Although there is a pretty big buffer, when new at least you have 9.09 .09 kilowatt hours available to get out of it so should be pretty good now the three series is offered in two trims this one is the rear wheel drive and then you can spec the x drive in terms of epa rated range this one is rated for 22 miles of electric only range the x drive you lose two miles so this is the rear wheel drive i've also selected a beautiful day here in colorado it's about 70 degrees outside almost no wind absolutely beautiful to do our city and highway range tests let me explain how these tests work. I try to test all of these cars in the series we created in almost the same way. What I've done is I've taken the 330e and I've driven it around this morning and then I charged it back up to 100%. This does two things. One, it makes sure we leave right as soon as it completes and the car just completed charging. Secondly, it means that things are warmed up. When your battery packs are warm, you have more available energy to eke out of them. So we've heated everything up. Nice warm day as is. And then we are going to be heading out on our range test with a fully charged battery. In our city test, we're going to stay below 40 miles per hour in stop and go traffic cruising around the city. This is our least scientific test, but it does simulate inner city driving. And usually we beat EPA in the city tests. And then we're going to charge it all the way back up to 100%. Get the car out on the highway at 70 miles per hour, lock it in electric mode. This can go up to 87 miles an hour in electric mode. And then we will see how far it goes in a loop style test at 70 constant. Should be pretty neat, I'm excited. We are now in the 330E, it is topped up to 100%. I've just posted a TikTok. If you don't follow us on TikTok, out of spec studios, love TikTok. Anyway, uh, we have a fully charged battery. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the car on and lock it in electric mode. There's also a mode where you can force the car to start in electric mode. So we have 110 horsepower and 77 pound feet of torque available to us with the electric motor. We're not gonna be flooring it or anything like that. This is a city range test driving normally, but the nice thing is it has plenty Plenty of get up and go in electric mode where you don't even need to kick on the gas engine even if you have to pull out in front of someone it's truly impressive the one downside with this electric system though just like with most bmw phevs is the electric motor is ahead of the transmission which means it actually shifts gears so if you're cruising normally and put your foot down to the kick down switch in electric mode you can go all the way to the kick down switch it stays in electric if you depress the switch at the bottom of the pedal it will kick on the combustion engine a stone cold engine at full boost. Don't ask me how they've made that work without it blowing up. That's pretty impressive technology. Um, if you, uh, you do feel it shift gears is what I'm trying to say. If you're cruising normally, hit the kick down switch. You can just, it, there's a pause. The transmission kicks down a couple cogs and then it goes. It's pretty weird. So we have 115.3 miles on our trip odometer. I need to keep that trip odometer going for other things. We are in electric mode. We're running 68 degrees on the climate control and the lowest fan setting and we are backing out of the driveway and we're just going to cruise around our little city here in Fort Collins without trying to hit any of these cyclists. Now the point of this drive is uh, to really test out the 330E uh, in a city environment. So we're going to be using some of the driver assistance, the backup cameras. For example, right now we have the rear cross traffic alert uh, letting us know that there's things behind us over here. This vehicle also has a feature called backup assist which is super cool. It remembers the last 50 meters of your drive and then backs up the identical path that you just took forwards. I think that is such a cool feature if you live in a tight parking garage or have a tight driveway, you just back up. You don't even have to touch the wheel. It just follows the same way that you came in. So really nice busy day here in town, which is exactly what we want. Again, around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, the reason we want such a busy, busy uh, environment is because we're trying to simulate stop and go. So electric mode, here we go in the rear wheel drive 330E off on the test. I'll update you um, in a little bit. We'll talk about some of the driver assistance stuff. Then I'll do a halfway update and then I'll let you know when the engine turns on as we do with every city range test. 
while we're in traffic, let's talk about the regen acceleration pedal situation. So obviously the accelerator pedal makes the car move, but in PHEVs and electric vehicles, different automakers take different strategies to control the vehicle slowdown. Some prefer no deceleration off accelerator pedal. Some have regen tied to a different setting you can put the vehicle in. And uh, here BMW is, I think, taking a very balanced approach. Uh, the three X330E that we've tested on this channel had a lot of regen off throttle. This 3 Series uh, has less regen off throttle. I actually think this whole car is better. I, you, if you watch that video, you noticed I was pretty harsh on the X330E. I just was not into it and specifically the steering wheel really bugged me well here is a m sport steering wheel that's not nearly as thick and really nicely but i actually love this steering wheel so it's almost like they listened to all my complaints in the x3 and fixed them here in the 3 series um <laughs> even though they didn't this car has been out of course uh so the regen situation works like this you lift off the accelerator pedal and it goes to charge and you get a little bit then the first little bit of the brake pedal increases regen and then if you push harder it blends in friction brakes it, blend, it blends you know pads to rotors the thing is with the brake pedal is this particular car has the dynamic handling package which gives it the upgraded brakes and they have really good stopping power um, however the calibration of a smooth stop has been lost in favor of a sharp stop and what I've noticed is sometimes just driving around normally I'm having to push the brake pedal, regen doesn't happen quick enough, there's almost a half a delay, I push harder on the brake pedal and then I'm in like a really hard stop situation. So it's something I'm sure you would get used to if you drive this car, again I've only driven it maybe 10 miles so far before we did this test, but I'm noticing that when I hit the brake pedal it is a little bit harder than I'm anticipating. Basically before the pedal builds up pressure it's decelerating quite quickly. Now on top of that, uh, that's really the only negative thing I have to say, that's a positive for performance driving though. We'll have to test out how this car is up in the canyons. We have a bunch of different driver assistance mode, and this one has the highest spec driver assistance with eye tracking. Uh, and so at low speed in traffic situations on, on the highway, you don't even have to touch the steering wheel as long as you're looking forward, which is really cool. So we're going to turn the system on here. We are in assisted driving. Uh, it will do, I believe, up to 30 seconds of standstill, maybe a little bit more. We'll set the max speed, let's say, to 45 miles per hour, and now it will move. Interestingly enough, as most adaptive cruise control systems have a problem where when the vehicle in front of you departs, they start moving, there's this lag time, and you always build up this buffer, and then you get into a rubber banding situation as the car tries to catch up and then they're already slowing down. BMW is trying to solve that situation with uh, a radar sensor that can read two cars ahead, similar to Tesla. And so not only is it tracking that Honda Pilot, it was also tracking that Jeep. It was also tracking where he was going and tried to push us over the line there. Again, this system is really meant for highway driving, but you can see it works pretty well here in the city and it's no problem at all. It's doing everything. So got to say big fan of this i think bmw's driver assistance systems are increasingly getting better uh I, it is not anywhere near autopilot not near super cruise in terms of its level of ability but for just the general adas functionality i would tick this if you're ordering this car uh it just makes driving so much more interesting and better um you can see it just pulls away right with traffic i think that's really great and it's just utilizing electric mode only really love it so cruising around in this car and this one again dynamic handling package has all the sporty stuff on it it's a firmer ride uh, definitely appreciate that for performance driving it is firmer than I would like for city driving but uh, not a bad cruiser at all very good and uh, let's update you when we get around 50% state of charge with anything new here is the 50% state of charge update. Just cruising along, everything is good. So far we've traveled about 12 miles, 13 miles or so, and uh, just as comfortable as could be. We are right on track from where I'd expect. We did a lot of stop and go so far, and now we're sort of up in the metropolitan uh, cruising roads, maybe 35, 40 miles per hour driving around in, getting some distance under our belt. I'd like to vary it up between really dense traffic to a little bit of stop and go to sort of this uh, 40 mile per hour, 35 mile per hour cruising. 
And uh, yeah, couldn't ask for anything better back on our street. I always try to end these range tests sort of right around where we started and that helps eliminate any elevation changes because our altitude or elevation stays pretty much the same. The city ones are probably the least scientific of our range tests I've mentioned and that's just because we have varying traffic and control. But my gut feeling says this is uh, right on par with almost any other city range test. We do a mix of environments. We have one mile left to empty indicated has been indicated for a while and uh, have to say it's still showing that it can output full power and it can reach full speed here on the display. The thing with BMW uh, plug-in hybrids is they leave quite a big buffer at the bottom of the battery especially. Again 9 kilowatt hour usable out of a 12 kilowatt hour pack. Most of that is down low and the reason is because some people will buy this car and just never plug it in and just run it as a normal hybrid and you can do that but of course you get so much more efficiency driving out of a, uh, a plug-in hybrid. I'd really Really love to get one of these in for a while and live with it for a few months do all of our errands and stuff and see just truly how much driving we end up doing on electric because we review plug-in hybrids but I've never actually owned one we own battery electric vehicles of course uh, and combustion vehicles but um, it'd be really interesting to track let's say six months of daily driving with a plug-in to see how much of that truly is electric especially with only nine kilowatt hours available so uh, I would definitely be the type of person that just plugs it in whenever I'm not using it although that brings up the other conversation should plug-in hybrids be allowed at public charging stations and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments right now we're just cruising around our neighborhood looks like we have a nice little obstacle sports course going on up here with a whole bunch of stuff I don't even know what's going on but uh, yeah pretty neat love our neighborhood. I've never actually been down this road. It's right behind our house. Well, it turns out you can drive quite a while on dash dashed empty. I think we've been doing it for a mile and a half now or so and uh, just driving normally. Our style hasn't changed. <laughs> this car doesn't want to turn on the combustion engine. So far, we've well exceeded the EPA range of 22 miles. We'll get the total count here when we finish up. But uh, yeah, let's just flip around. We'll go right back on our road again. And back this way, off we go. Being rear wheel drive, you can really tell that this car is quite agile on the rear axle. I really like the rear wheel drive 3 Series. It's just a pure car. This one's 4,039 pounds though, and that's without options. This thing's probably 4,200 pounds with everything specced in it. It's a lot of weight for, <laughs> for a 3 Series, that's for sure. Oh, and we've just switched over 140.8 miles on the odometer. I'm going to pull over right here and let's run some calculations. So the 3 Series has managed exactly 25.5 miles in the city range test. And I would say that's as expected, right on par with some of the Volvo competitors like S60 uh, T8. We've tested the V60 T8 at around 25 miles, something like this. So it's all about the same. And uh, yeah, can't complain here. That's plenty of driving. Honestly, it took us almost two hours to drive that far. Uh, maybe not, maybe an hour and a half just because we were in such stop and go traffic. So pretty good. Let's see how it does on the highway next. And now you join me on the highway. Right now we're driving in battery control mode. I'm just trying to find a good break in traffic. What we'll probably do is just jump right in front of this truck and then uh, lock it in electric mode. So basically what I told the BMW, charged it all the way up at home of course, uh, what I told the BMW was, you know, hold the battery pack, essentially battery control, charge it or hold it at 100%. The nice thing is, if you know you're heading into a city and your battery is low, you can actually tell it to charge up to 100% or 80% or whatever you would like. So what we're doing is we're going to set the cruise control at 70. I've already confirmed a GPS accurate uh, speed is 71 miles per hour in this particular car. We have a good break in traffic. What we're going to do is just get over this uphill right in front of us. We're going to then deselect battery control mode and select electric mode. Again, you can drive almost 90 miles an hour all electric in this car. 71 miles per hour indicated here on the screen is actually 70 miles per hour GPS accurate. BMWs always are a bit optimistic as are most German cars. I'm on the driver assistance system which is dead accurate and straight on the highway. Really good. Even shows me vehicles in the other lane coming up and going past. This is a really nice driver assistance uh, system. I really like this quite a bit and uh, here we are right at the top of the hill I'm going to hit electric 
At 156.7, we have shut off the combustion engine. We hit about 50% stay of charge, or maybe just a bit over. I'll take an exit and loop back around, and that way we can counteract the wind, which there is almost none of today. Uh, this is actually the next morning. It's 55 degrees Fahrenheit outside. A little bit colder, but I preconditioned the car and got it all set up and everything. And then uh, we will do, of course, go all the way up, come back on the highway, and that uh, counteracts any wind or elevation differences between, because there are a few rolling hills along this route. Can't be perfectly flat here in Colorado. So uh, let's let's do some range testing. We've already just come off 100% down to like 97, 98. This shouldn't take very long. We are now down to 50% state of charge on our highway loop. And uh, you know, one thing I should always mention is I always set the tire pressures to manufacturer suggested for light load rating. Uh, when it's just me in the car. So that's that's how these tire pressures were set. 50% uh, state of charge, looking for an exit. I should ideally should have taken one already. I like to go just above 50%, uh, but looks like there's just a big gap here. So we'll take the next available exit, flip around, head back and log the mileage. Good news is there's not much wind and the rolling hills kind of equal itself out. And again, we'll be able to go backwards most of the way. I am holding up the entire state of Colorado behind me to pass that truck, but we're doing it in the name of science, if only if they knew. I can't have any aerodynamic uh, uh, advantage by following a big truck here. We have to go around them. And thankfully, on a Sunday morning like today, it's usually pretty empty out on the road. So all is good and really enjoying this car. The driver assistance stuff is really good in this car. Uh, I'm very impressed, very impressed with the comfort, the build quality. It's a three series, you know, uh, when we get to review cars, you'll have to head over to Out of Spec Reviews to watch my reviews on this car. But I, I love the size of a 3 Series. I've owned the previous generation M3, the F80 generation. I, I liked that car, uh, but this does everything that car did. And honestly, I don't drive that fast on the street, so I probably don't need an M3. Uh, you know, the 330E may be the best 3 Series to uh, buy of this generation. And I love how much driving range you get on electric. I mean, you can do like a commute to work. Thankfully, here's an exit. You can do all of your driving around town and then just plug it in whenever you're not using it. Uh, like I said earlier in this video, I'd love to live with a plug-in hybrid for a year and at the end of the year, figure out how many miles we drove electric. If you'd like to see that, let us know because that might entice us to uh, make some decisions on our side. So, all right, let's uh, flip around here on the exit. We're gonna do gentle acceleration back up on the highway. We always accelerate back up on the loop in electric mode. I will not kick on the combustion engine canceling cruise control now we're going to coast into the stop with a little bit of regen two lefts and back on the highway guys we have a predicted one mile of range remaining we are almost back to our starting point actually not too far away and the range on the highway has completely blown me totally away we have traveled uh 26 miles so far did we just go farther on the highway than we have in the city i feel like bmws tend to do this um what an interesting strategy i'll round up the total numbers here for you in a second we just hit dash dash to empty and i'm just keeping an eye on the uh, gauges here because the engine kicks on so smoothly you'd never know when it transfers back to combustion this last little uphill i think is just going to drain it and uh and put us back onto combustion but man this is like a serious highway cruiser in electric mode i i'm really impressed i wonder if as much as i dislike the electric motor being on the transmission i wonder if that helps with the highway range it must it must so let's see the road's really bumpy through here as you can tell everyone's passing us 100 so we started with 156.8 miles we're at 183.6 we've got almost 30 miles in electric mode uh, it's my buddy in the Corvette over there. All right, let's see what we have. Keeping it going, keeping an eye on the gauge. We've just passed, uh, we're about to hit 28 miles driving all electric here. Wow, this is so impressive, this range there just switched 184.9 so we've gone exactly 29 miles <laughs> that's crazy 29 miles all electric we finished basically right at the starting point you couldn't have asked for a better test than that pretty incredible gotta say i am blown away 
Well, thanks so much for watching another episode of Inside EVs. We'll see you on the next one, of course, and I hope you're just as, as impressed as I am with this car beating its EPA range by tons. Now I'm gonna put the car in battery control, charge it up to 100% on the high voltage battery, and do some reviews and shredding it up the canyons. See you on the next one.